Hey, so one of the things I want to begin doing is doing one or two devotions midweek, um, just covering stuff that I couldn't squeeze into the Sunday message. Uh, there's just too much good stuff uh, that I have to leave out, and so I thought I'll do some short devotions um, during the week just to kind of um, re-emphasize some of the things in Revelation that I don't have time to cover on Sunday. And so uh, I want to begin by just really just telling you a story. Uh, this last Sunday we talked about how important the Word of God is. Um, and uh, someone, I don't know who did this, but someone says that there's 7,000 promises from God to His people. Now we've got to be careful because not all of these promises are specific to us. They were specific to the people whom the letters were being written to. But nevertheless, many of the promises in Scripture actually are beneficial to us. That's why they were preserved. Uh, that's why we still have them today, because God can speak to us in our present context. So I want to read a story to you about uh, some missionaries named Dick and Margaret Hillis. Um, they were missionaries in China before China became communist back in the late 30s, early 40s. Uh, but once China became a communist nation, they kicked all of the Western missionaries out of the country. Um, and so this is a story um, that took place before that. I'll just read it to you straight from the book. Um, they were caught up in China during the Japanese invasion. The couple lived with their two children in the inland town of Shenikiu. Uh, the village was tense with fear and every day brought terrifying reports of the Japanese advance. At the worst possible time, Dick developed appendicitis and he knew his life depended upon making the long journey by rickshaw uh, to the hospital. And so this is back on January 15, 1941. And so with deep foreboding, they say, Margaret watched him leave. Soon the Chinese colonel came with the news that the enemy was near and the townspeople must evacuate. And Margaret shivered, knowing that the one-year-old Johnny and two-month-old Margaret Ann would never survive as refugees. And so she stayed put. And early the next morning, she tore a page from her wall calendar uh, and this is the scripture that was on the wall calendar that day. Psalm 56, verse 3. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. And so she choose, chose to trust God in that moment. The town soon emptied of people during the day. And the next, mor next morning, Margaret arose, feeling completely alone, completely abandoned. She looked at the calendar that day, and here's what was written on it, Psalm 910. You, O Lord, will not forsake me. You, O Lord, will not forsake me. And she just kind of took that as a word from God for herself. The next morning, she arose to the distant sounds of gunfire, and she began to worry about food for her children. That day she looked on the calendar and it was Genesis chapter 50 verse 21 which said, I will nourish you and your little ones. And so as she waited throughout that day, a woman, an elderly woman, suddenly came to her house with a pail of steaming goat's milk. And then a little while later, another straggler arrived and brought her a basket of eggs. You can call it coincidence you can call it divine intervention. Uh, throughout the day, she could hear the sounds of warfare. They were growing louder and louder. And during the night, she prayed for protection. She prayed that God would deliver her from this danger. And the next morning, she tore off the page from the calendar to read Psalm 56, verse 9. When I cry out to you, you shall turn my enemies back. When I cry out to you, you will turn my enemies away. And as the battle was looming closer and closer, um, she could not even go to bed that night. Invasion seemed absolutely imminent. But the next morning, all was quiet. She couldn't figure it out. She didn't know what was going on. And suddenly, villagers began to return to their homes. And the colonel 
himself came to her house and knocked on the door and for some reason he told her we have no idea why but the Japanese had withdrawn their troops no one could understand it but the danger had passed and they were safe and they would soon be taken out of China and they would plant themselves in the Bay Area and start an organization a mission organization called OC International that sends missionaries all around the world today and I had the privilege of serving with OC missionaries uh, when my wife and I were in the little country of Swaziland now called Eswatini what an amazing story of how God can just show up and how God can bring comfort and how God can bring courage in the face of any circumstance and so it is so important to hold on to and to cherish, to memorize, to meditate on the promises of God. You know, when you're in a critical situation, you might not have a calendar just to tear off and, and have God speak directly to you. And that's why it's so imperative to meditate and to memorize Scripture. Because God cannot bring to your mind what has not first been put there. But when you have put God's word and you have hid it in your heart when you need it that moment when you need it God can bring it to your mind and it can give you courage it can give you faith and it can give you hope in the midst of any circumstance so God bless you guys and I uh, will probably bring one or two more this week for you uh, as we work our way through the book of Revelation uh, be encouraged walk in faith and hold on to hope. See you next time.